Buckingham Palace, the London home of the British royal family. It was here in 1948 that a son was born to Princess Elizabeth, elder daughter of King George VI and heir to the throne. Gunn saluted the new prince, and crowds of well-wishers gathered outside his home. He was christened Charles Philip Arthur George, and four generations of his family were present. The robe he wore was a family heirloom made for Queen Victoria's children. Here, he's with his great-grandmother, Queen Mary. Like any other proud young parents, Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip loved to take their baby son out in his pram, the pram once used by his mother, and to play with him in a sunny garden. Prince Charles' mother, there were other duties. When her father was ill, Princess Elizabeth deputized for him at the King's birthday parade. After taking a salute, the princess rode at the head of the household troops to Buckingham Palace. As she took up her position at the gates, her small son and the rest of the royal family looked down with pride. Soon there was a sister to share Prince Charles' nursery, Princess Anne, christened like her brother at Buckingham Palace. This time, Prince Charles wasn't quite so quiet. Like any other little boy of two, he was into everything, never still. The young family had settled at Clarence House, close to the palace, and Prince Charles continued his ordinary happy childhood. On his third birthday, he went out in the park. He had a lot of friends, his nanny, the policemen and soldiers, the servants and household, and many friends of his own age too. Prince Charles enjoyed meeting people and seeing new things. In many ways, he was just an ordinary boy, but not always. In all England's long history, Prince Charles was the first prince to see his mother crowned as sovereign. At her special wish, he was brought to Westminster Abbey for the crowning and the homage. He saw his father, too, kneel to do allegiance to his mother, the Queen. What did a small boy, one day to be king himself, think of it? The splendor and magnificence. He could know little as yet, of the life of dedication and hard work which would follow. A life which brought separations, but happy reunions too. Prince Charles and Princess Anne were the first members of the royal family to voyage in the new Royal Yacht Britannia when they sailed to join their parents returning from a world tour. The Queen Mother and Princess Margaret came to see them off.
Both children instantly love the sea and ships and sailors. But soon it was time to sail and the royal children came on deck to wave goodbye to the Queen Mother. start of a wonderful adventure. Everything was new. The destroyer escort, the other ships, and the first sight of Malta. The prince and princess were met by the governor. Already they had learned the formal manners for such occasions. Happily reunited with their parents, the children watched the queen take the salute. Soon it was time to leave Malta and sail west to Gibraltar, the rocky fortress which guards the entrance to the Mediterranean. The royal children watched eagerly as the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh went ashore. Both children were full of questions as the impressive keys were delivered to the Queen by the Governor. More questions for the two leading stokers chosen from volunteers as guards, companions and friends. The famous Barbary apes on the rock were exciting to visit. And to feed. This was a day Prince Charles and Princess Anne would never forget, feeding the apes high above the harbour at Gibraltar. Homeward bound, and there was plenty to see sailing up the Thames to London. To the cheers of the crowds, Britannia passed under Tower Bridge into the Pool of London, and from the special saluting bridge, the royal family waved back. Just by Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament, the Queen and her family came ashore to a tumultuous welcome. For Prince Charles and Princess Anne, it was their first return from a visit abroad. It was their turn to give a welcome when the Queen Mother came back from her tour of Australia and New Zealand. Queen Mother and her grandchildren are particularly close friends and the whole family is happy to be together again. Wish I had a uniform like that. They ride home through the streets of London, a drive in all the pomp and colour which will encompass their future. Pageantry of another kind in Scotland. At Braemar there are Pipers and Highland Games. The skilled sport of throwing the hammer is popular. Another treat is the horse show at Windsor, although the English weather can be chilly. 
all the royal family, including the children, are knowledgeable about horses. Prince Charles fares school, and it's sports day, and a chance for his friends to meet his father. The royal children are sturdy and encouraged to take the rough with the smooth. Prince Charles plays cricket and football, sails, swims and rides, both horse and bicycle. second and bigger school. The first day of term, and for most of the boys, a return to the familiar round. A chance to bag a good desk for the early comers, and old friends to meet again. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh wanted their son to lead a normal life like any other boy, so they sent him to boarding school. Prince Charles will have his chance to live and mix with other boys, holding his own in the democracy of the classroom and playing field. An opportunity for a king to be, to meet his people, to join in their daily lives and make friends. In the holidays, he sometimes goes sailing with his father and Arthur Fox, the famous yacht designer. But some of the children's holiday fun has a serious purpose behind it. The local church near Balmoral, their home in Scotland, needs money to build a hall. So the people in the village hold a sale of work to raise funds. The Queen and her family come to help. For the royal children, first steps in a life of service to others which lies ahead. There are plenty of customers for the Queen behind the counter. At Belmoral, every possible moment is spent in the open air. The ponies are brought on holiday too. The bigger one is called Greensleeves and the other William. It is one of the children's greatest joys to be with them and look after them. At Windsor, on most summer weekends, the Duke plays polo, and Princess Anne likes to be there. Whenever possible, the family tries to stay together. So when the Queen makes visits to islands off the coast of Britain, the children often go too, in the Royal Yacht Britannia. They love these trips with their opportunities for picnics, like the one they had on Princess Anne's sixth birthday. 
Wherever they are, the royal family like to entertain. And the children meet their mother's guests, often famous people like President Eisenhower, a great favorite with Prince Charles and Princess Anne. But they also enjoy the same things as other boys and girls. The fun of the fair, the big wheel, the lights and the blaring music and excitement. scary thrill of the dark ride through the unknown perils of a ghost train. And the chance of a bash in a bumper car. Once more, the guns sounded, this time for the birth of Prince Andrew. At Belmoral, there was a queen's baby for the first time in a hundred years, and his brother and sister enjoyed taking him out in the pram. Now the family is all together, and as in any other happy family, the baby is the center of interest. Like his brother and sister, secure in the affection of their family, he is enjoying the greatest heritage that any child can have. 